now that we've covered uh, the price elasticity of demand, which is by far the most frequent uh, type of elasticity that you're going to have to be looking at, we're going to look at other elasticities. Now, these are less likely to show up in the AP test, but they do still make an appearance from time to time, in some cases, even as free response questions. So they are important to know. The one that comes up most frequently is the cross price elasticity. This is when you're comparing the percent change in the quantity of one good to the percent change in the price of another. Uh, so really think about that. The percent change in price of one good, um, a quantity of one good to the ch percent change in price of another. Um, this really uh, lets you know about substitutes and complements. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense um, because the idea of a substitute is well, when price of the substitute increases, demand for the other one increases. Um, so what you're looking at with cross-price elasticity is if there is a positive relationship there, is if there is a positive cross-price elasticity, then you have substitutes. Um, now, by and large, that's how this is going to work, uh, just looking at positive versus negative. So um, the idea of close versus weak substitutes, I don't think it's ever actually shown up on the AP test. but uh, it, just in the off chance it does, uh, if there is a larger number versus a smaller number, a number closer to zero or further away from zero, it lets you know how close or weak of a substitute it is. So if there's not much of a change, uh, it, it means that there is a small uh, number, a small positive number, that would mean uh, that it's a weak substitute. If there's a large change, it means they're very close substitutes. Uh, so that's a larger cross price elasticity, still positive if they have a negative relationship. Uh, so if the price of, uh, if the quantity of good A increases when the uh, price of good B decreases, well, that lets you know about complements uh, when they have that negative um, uh, negative relationship, which once again, makes sense. That's what happens with complements is the price of a complement uh, decreases, the demand for the other good increases. Um, so. Uh, once again, you can uh, do the same sort of analysis versus uh, strong versus weak complements. So if uh, it's close to zero, it's a weak complement. If it's further from zero, uh, it is a strong complement or good. Uh, now, it is important, once again, to remember that this now looks at positive and negative. So even though price elasticity of demand, we always did the um, absolute value, here we want to keep the negative number if it is there. Um, so don't just uh, take the absolute value there. We need to know whether or not this is positive or negative. The second type of elasticity, uh, the second most likely to show up of these other elasticities is the income elasticity. Uh, and this uh, is exactly what it sounds like. It measures the change in percent change in quantity versus the percent change in income. And this should be setting off trigger, um, uh, set off alarm bells in your head over the idea of versus a normal versus an inferior good. Uh, so if the uh, income increases and the quantity demanded increases, well, that means that it's a normal good, uh, which makes sense. Income increases, demand increases with normal goods. Um, now, once again, uh, the, the normal way of looking at this is uh, whether or not it's positive or negative, not necessarily caring so much about luxuries versus necessities, but you could do an analysis off of this. Uh, so if uh, it is greater than one, uh, if the income elasticity is greater than one, it means demand rises faster than income. Well, that means it's a, more of a luxury good. Um, if it's less than one, uh, it means demand rises slower than income. It's more of a necessity, uh, which makes sense when you when you think about it on its face. Um, when you have a necessity, you're going to buy about the same of it no matter what. I mean, you will increase a bit uh, as your income increases, but you're, you're not changing a whole lot there. Uh, when you're talking luxuries, you will have a larger change when you have a uh, change to income. Uh, if it is negative, if the income increases and the uh, quantity demanded uh, decreases, that means it's an inferior good, uh, which once again, uh, makes sense given the relationship that we set up for inferior goods previously. The last type of elasticity that shows up, uh, but it's, it's very rare, um, is the price elasticity of supply. Now, this is the same exact analysis that you do 
uh, for uh, demand as you do supply. Uh, in this case, however, it's, you know, since supply is upward sloping, you should always have a positive um, price elasticity of supply instead of a negative one that you'd have with demand. Uh, but the, the equations are the same. It's still percent change quantity over percent change price. Uh, so it's the same exact idea. Uh, and when you're looking at this, it's the, um, if, if it's inelastic, so if it is, um, if it's less than one, uh, that means that the inputs are fixed, so you don't have many uh, much room there uh, in terms of uh, change to your inputs. Uh, it also is likely a short-term uh, idea. So the idea is uh, you have a short-term uh, turnaround. Um, you don't have a, lo a whole lot of time, and if it's elastic, if it's greater than one, well, then it's the opposite. Uh, inputs are very available. It's very easy for um, companies to go out and expand their production, uh, or it's long term. Um, the idea that producers have a long time to respond to change, and that's something that's big in uh, elasticity in general. If you have a long time to, um, to if you have a long time to respond to a change, it tends to be more elastic. This this makes sense. That that goes for a price elasticity of demand as well. Um, if you have more time, well, then your your good is more elastic. Um, if you want, uh, page 480 in your textbook is a, is a great cheat sheet for all of these elasticities, uh, a great spot to just sort of look back, uh, if you need a quick one-stop shop for them all, uh, in terms of what they mean. Uh, but that is all of the types of elasticity that you have to know.